I now also want to um, welcome uh, Christian Fries back to the to the stage, and um, yeah, you can you you would like to stay with him? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> now when you, you you are so used to each other. Because it's actually Christian that said, "I'm coming to Recom, aren't you?" And I said, "Well, mm, I don't know." <laughs> so it's thanks to him that I'm here. <laughs> You're most welcome. <laughs> Thank you sure. very much. Well, I'm I'm really pleased to be here. I feel at home in a kind of research academia community here, so having spent 10 years of my own life uh, in, in that exact uh, position. Uh, I feel really at home here with good friends, uh, Tom and Janning, who told me everything about CG modeling, and, and, and Finn, who told me uh, very much about development, uh, having worked with all of you. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a pleasure uh, to be here, so, uh, so thank you uh, for that. Uh, and it's also good to be part of a recom exercise. Actually, I, I did write together with Channing one paper into the recom uh, research uh, body, and when I became a minister, I obviously panicked immediately and said, "What did I write?" You know, <laughs> 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 because suddenly, of course, now I have quite different opinions about uh, uh, a lot of <laughs> things. So, so I never said that, uh, <laughs> just uh, from the outset. But this issue, aid in a changing environment and, and aid and climate change, I think is absolutely crucial. And, and it's something we, we, we did it wrong in the 90s. We, didn't, we, we ran climate change into something that had to do with obstacles and constraints uh, and quotas and, uh, and binding uh, 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 agreements. Um, and it did not uh, at all inspire anybody, especially not in the developing world, because they saw it as an obstacle to growth. And they said rightly, uh, with an equity perspective, that this is not fair. You caused it, we take most of the burden, and then you try to force us to stop our growth pan uh, path uh, in order uh, to, uh, to solve it. It's not fair, which it wasn't. And it didn't inspire, inspire anybody. I think we've learned a lot from that. And today we have turned it around and from talking about the climate agenda as a stumbling stone on a pathway to growth, we try now to create the building blocks uh, that can take us there instead. And I think sustainable energy for all is probably the, boast, the best example. The global initiative where I am uh, proudly part of the advisory board uh, is an example of how you can turn it around and turn it into something aspirational. Because sustainable energy for all has the three strong goals. We must get modern energy to everybody. Every single woman standing in a smoke-filled hut, every single child who cannot uh, learn to read and write because they don't have light, uh, we have to get them energy, and modern energy and electricity. That's inspirational. That brings people together. That's a task to work on. And then we need to double our energy efficiency. That's also inspirational because that's, it's, 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 that's a, a, a free lunch. Uh, because doing that, you know, it creates jobs as well. Uh, those who insulate our houses or, or to improve uh, our, the, the cook stoves um, in, in, in with poor families, that's growth as well. Uh, and, 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 and it's a free lunch, it's good economy as well. And then we need to double uh, the share of renewables. That's inspirational. That's about investments in solar panels and in biofuels and in, in, uh, in biogas and all of it. And it could be done. Just a few months back, I visited a small uh, village in Nepal that I have, the Danes would know, I've talked a little bit about it. <laughs> but in Nepal, they actually did it right, uh, you know. And, and I really visited the small village, you know, uh, where they now have solar panels and they have micro hydro and they have uh, biogas and improved cook stoves and all of it. And it's about growth and jobs and everything. And the tailor was tailoring away during the night because he had the electric light, you know, and the kids were getting their school work done, you know, and. And um, and 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 the, the, as I said, that the chicken who are <laughs> eating more and growing faster because they had light uh, throughout uh, the the night as well, and thereby of course dying earlier. <laughs> uh, but but that's part of the game, and that's part of growth. Uh, uh, and uh, so it was really inspirational. And building this from the bottom up, you know, that's where climate change mitigation, adaptation, and development uh, uh, partnerships comes uh, together. I agree with Channing, he said prices. Prices are crucial. Prices are absolutely crucial, and we've underestimated it as well. Uh, and with Local Sustainable Energy for All, if you want 
uh, to get energy, electricity to everybody, prices need to be low. If you want the energy efficiency to go up, prices must be high. And if you want renewables to come in big time, prices must be right. And it's about feed-in tariffs and all of it. So that's a very complicated issue to solve. And here development aid can come in again as one of the catalyzing effects of getting prices right. I think one of the new World Bank initiatives is fascinating because what the quick win here is fossil fuel uh, subsidies, getting rid of those. That's It must, should be easy, but it's not. But if we do it, it is a win-win-win-win-win-win, you can go on for an hour uh, <laughs> situation because that's really good economics, it's good climate, it's good development because fossil fuel subsidies do not reach the poor, uh, they don't. Uh, it primarily they go to the rich, uh, getting rid of them we can, and using the revenue we can get much larger impact on poverty by using the money more smartly uh, at social safety nets, uh, for instance. So what the World Bank says now to a country like Egypt, they say, okay, you can't get rid of your fossil fuel subsidies because people will turn, it, go to the streets and, 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 and triple uh, or, or try to topple your, your government uh, if you do so. So what we will offer you is a social safety net in return for cutting fossil fuel uh, subsidies. That's really, really a good deal. Uh, and, uh, and that way of catalyzing economic policy, prices, renewables, uh, uh, energy e efficiency and taking care of uh, the social concerns and, and fighting poverty at the same time is what those those situations we should look for. And that's where we can get a double bang for all the box that we have. Uh, uh, and, and increasingly, that's how uh, we need to work. Uh, uh, we need thereby also to be much more innovative in, 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 uh, in raising money and financing. And we are so. Uh, I often brag about the Danish Climate Investment Fund. Wherever I t whenever I take two kroners and put into the climate investment funds, then our pension funds and our uh, the pension funds and corporate investors they come with three four times as much. Now that gives me ten from two, then I have ten, and then we can invest together with companies, and then they say they can triple, four double, ten double, perhaps even. The, the investments. So by means of a few kroners, uh, I can perhaps get 20, 30, 40 kroners of climate investments uh, out of it. Now that's really smart. And we need to do much more of that. And, and we are doing much more of that. Blending, leveraging uh, investments uh, and using it to mobilize investments in, in climate uh, uh, change and or in, in, in climate mitigation and adaptation at the same time. It's a really good investment and we haven't done it uh, enough. Um, and finally, my last point, we need to be much better at measuring, of course. Um, we need to be able to ever also to measure our success. Uh, now, in Sustainable Energy for All, they've already done the first uh, global tracking framework. In immensely important. Now you have a baseline for the three targets in Sustainable Energy for All. Uh, and now we know where to invest. Then we get policies and prices right. We mobilize innovative uh, financing, and then we need to measure whether it actually works in the right way for our economy. GDP is not enough. We need a green GDP. We need uh, uh, the, uh, new ways of measuring growth and wealth. And we are supporting heavily the WAVES initiative uh, in the World Bank and other initiatives, trying to be better at measuring how uh, to promote a change and combine the climate uh, and uh, and development uh, agenda in new innovative ways. So that's what's in front of us. And at the same time, of course, and we can get back to the discussion on that, we have a humongous challenge in front of us on mobilizing the overall financing for both those important agendas. But yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Christian. Mm -hmm.